What is up guys? Today we're gonna to be changing the fuel filter on uh, the 2021 F450. So there's two fuel filters on the 2020 and 2021 power strokes. One's underneath of the hood and one's right beside the fuel tank. What we're gonna do is there's a drain on the fuel tank filter. So we're gonna drain it first. While we're waiting for it to drain, we'll change the filter underneath the hood. And then once that's changed, we'll go back and change the filter by the fuel tank. By that time, it should be pretty well drained out and we won't get a big mess that way. So the tools and supplies you need to do this is you need a, some rags, a screwdriver, a, like a small straight head screwdriver, the filters, there's two filters, and uh, a, a drain pan to drain the fuel into. So we'll go ahead, I'm gonna start from the outside and roll under with the creeper. Uh, the filter is actually in front of the fuel tank, not beside it, like I said at the introduction. That's your filter right there. And this yellow thing is your fuel drain. Just make sure you got a drain pan and you can just, so you just twist it counterclockwise and kind of pull down on a little bit, make sure it's down and then it'll drain. And while we're waiting for that to drain out, we'll go ahead and change the filter underneath of the hood. So the fuel filter itself is located under the hood, like I said, the first fuel filter. Well, this is actually the secondary fuel filter, I guess you would call it. So what you gotta do is you gotta unhook the three fuel lines and then this whole top twist and pulls out. So to unhook these fuel lines, I'll kind of twist it so you can see. These tabs here, you just kind of squeeze them together and push out. These, this green one actually doesn't squeeze together. It pulls out towards the, we'll call it towards the driver's side. See how it pulls out there? Pulls out just like that and you just push forward and it comes right out. And this is where you might need a little screwdriver. You don't want to pry on it hard, but it might help you just to pry a little. But you shouldn't be really prying on anything very, very hard. Now this one here is the one you squeeze together and push. Squeeze together. And it'll kind of fall down in this hole here and then push up. Same way. I wouldn't, I actually wouldn't use screwdrivers with this. You just, with the screwdriver, you might have to put too much torque on it and end up accidentally breaking something. comes off of there same way and this one here it's the same deal there's two little tabs in the back here see these little tabs here there's one on the bottom also it's hard to see but you squeeze these together push it out do that again for you push it to squeeze it together push it out like here you might want to get in there with a the screwdriver but you should be able to just do it with your hands and just pull it right off then this here, just grab it, twist it if you're looking from the top. Just be careful you don't break your lines or the, the clips. If you was looking from the top, you'd be twisting counterclockwise. And let's just lift it up out of there. You'll twist it and it'll hit a, hit a spot and you just lift it up out of there. So we'll uh, set this one down here. So to put the new one in, same way we pulled it out, we twisted it this way and pulled it out. So we'll drop it down in roughly in the same position. So to put it back in, when we took it out, we twisted it this way and lifted it out. So basically we'll put it, drop it back down in like this and twist it back the opposite direction of which way we took it out. So put it in like that, it'll fall down on the groove. See, watch, may give a little down pressure, but it'll fall down in the groove there and just twist it clockwise now until it stops and to hook your lines up you just push them on there oh, I accidentally had this one clipped here let's let's get it unclipped oh 
lights on here. Just make sure your clips are undone before you put it back together. See, I didn't have my clips undone there. Make sure your clips are unlocked and then slide it on. Slide it on, then pull your clips back, and then pull one and make sure it's locked. Oh, see, that one wasn't locked. Push it together, push the clips up, and push on it. There you go. Push the clips down, pull on it, make sure it's locked. Got to take this little cap off the middle one. This one here, remember, make sure your clip's unlocked. Push it on there, push your clip down, and then pull on it, make sure it's locked. Same with the last one. Make sure your clip's up. Push it on there, and push it down. Pull on it, make sure it's locked. And then that's it, this thing actually does float. There's nothing that really holds it. It's actually a seal sealed fuel filter. I'll show you here what I mean by that. So it's basically it's own fuel filter bowl and everything. There's no uh, no drain bowl or anything like on the older style uh, seven threes and that. It's just you drop it in there and twist it, and it's its own sealed unit. So you can't really open it up and look at the cartridge unless you open it up with a saw or something. So we'll go ahead and uh, start changing the filter underneath the truck. All I'm using is just a standard uh, quarter inch drive ratchet with an eight millimeter socket on the end of it. Let's see what tools you need. So all you do, once it's drained out, you can see it's starting to drain out the hole out of the way. You just push up on this little tab right here and pull it. It'll come right off of there. So we'll do that again. Try to click the lock. Just push on this tab here, this little one in the middle. Push on that tab. And pull it. Then all we do now is take out these uh, eight millimeter bolts and it'll drop right out of there. So I'm gonna set you guys up and you can watch me take that down out of there. So the first thing we'll do is take the you want to pay attention to which side the the air ring is on and the air rings on the yellow drain side now to get this out of here just hold it and slide it towards the drain side and it'll lift right out of there we'll go ahead and Drain what little bit of fuel's left in that. Wait this out. You wanna try and keep the inside of this extremely clean. The cleaner you keep your fuel system, the longer your injectors and your pumps will last. A little piece of dirt that you can't even really see could wipe out an injector. And uh, so the new filter has a new gasket, so I'm gonna change the gasket. Usually, I'm actually using a pick, but you can use a little flathead screwdriver. Just pry that out of there. Pull it out. Wipe the inside of that groove out. And we'll put the new, the new gasket's preformed, so you just start at the two corners on one side. It doesn't matter which side. Just press it down in there work start at one end and work your way around the whole way you might have to like move it around a little bit to get it to actually fit this one here but it'll fit let's see
We're looking for new filter. It's nice how they give you the Ziploc bag. Put your old filter in, you don't have to worry about a mess. So remember, your gasket went towards the drain, which is towards me now. Then you just drop it down in there and then slide it in. That's all there is to it. Make sure it's connected on both sides. And you don't want to get this dirty. Uh, the design of these, because the one in the front sealed, and this one is open like this, you can't really fill them up. So you gotta. You, it's really important that you purge the system of air. And I'll show you how to do that once we get this filter in here. We'll wipe the bottom of the the housing off here too. That way you're mating safe surfaces for that gasket's nice and clean. We already wiped the one before we put the gasket in the bottom. We'll wipe this one out good. And remember, the drain was towards the front. So you just put it in the same way it came out. Should go in there. You shouldn't have to push really or anything. It'll just go right up in there. Get your screws started. I always like to start with the the middle screw and then make like a V pattern. So you start with your middle and then go up. But you want to get them all started first before you can start snugging them up tight. The way these are designed too, it's almost, well, it is impossible actually. If you would have that thing in there backwards, I don't even think it would go in there number one but you couldn't plug this water separator cord back in. So we got them all, all the bolts started. We'll go ahead and start snugging these up. Like I said, I'm gonna start in the middle. You shouldn't crank on these real hard. It should just pull itself right up. You're just twerking plastic. Just make a V pattern. It's five bolts total. want to snug them up. I'm sure if you wanted to get real particular, you could go, call Ford and they would give you a torque spec, but Once you get them all snugged, I always like to go back and just double check. Yeah, make sure they're good and tight. If it's not tight, that's a good chance that you can install that crooked somehow. Then uh, make sure your drain is closed so it, it needs to be up. And then uh, Upper and uh, if you're looking at it, it would be the clockwise position. So if you can turn in the clockwise, if it if it doesn't turn in the clockwise position, you got it. And this just pushes on there like the fuel lines did. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get the air out of the system. And to do that, we need to cycle the ignition probably four or five times. You'll actually hear it audibly change tone it'll sound like there's a bunch of air bubbles and stuff going back in the tank and then it'll it, the pump won't really be straining all at once it'll start straining and it'll actually probably uh shut off hopefully before the ignition cycles over but if you do it six seven times you should be plenty good enough um so what you do if you got a push button you do not touch the brake at all through this process because if you touch the brake the truck will start you want to do this without the truck starting so if you got a push button you'll push the push button let it cycle the once it's done cycling push the push button again that'll kill everything push it again that'll be cycle number two it'll make its noise again once it's done making its noise push it again it'll stop just do that five or six times and 
listen for the pump to audibly make a noise. If you got a key, you just put the key in, turn it, same way it'll make the noise. Once it's done making that noise, shut it off, turn it back on, it'll make the noise again. Just keep doing it five or six times, and you'll hear it, it'll audibly, audibly change uh, tone whenever you got all the air out. So we'll go ahead and do that. So all I'm doing is pushing a push button. You can hear the pumps not even strain. There's the air bubbles. Now fuel's pouring out of the ground right now. That means your uh, your drain isn't shut off on the bottom. My camera cut out halfway through there. Uh, we just got done with the the. Uh, first cycle so we'll hit it again all you gotta do is press the button or shut your ignition off it'll clear out and press it again you can hear it I didn't realize that I lost you guys through the second cycle there so uh, you you heard it there I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna start cycle three here so you just press it or shut your key off then press it again. If you guys like this channel, please hit the subscribe button down there. And if you guys have any ideas for any future subjects of the video, please drop it down in the comments below. We're going to cover truck maintenance here, both pickups and semi trucks. We're going to do a lot of RV and RV maintenance. We're going to cover some campgrounds. And then we also do a lot of just traveling in general. So we'll do some traveling videos. We're going to probably do some boating videos. we got a boat repair project we got coming up. Uh, really anything you guys see that you guys need help with, just drop it down there in the comments and I'll, I'll do my best to make a video of it. Till next time, you guys stay safe out there. And like I said, really help this channel out by liking and subscribing and setting your alarms.